Well, good evening to you. If it's not one thing, it, it seems like it, it, it's another um, right now. Um, here's the good news. You know, while, while we are so blessed in this life, while, while in many ways we're just absolutely spoiled rot, I think, the good news is, rather than this world, is not our own. You know, I, I'm sure, like me, in times of discouragement, which I think is a word that, that probably aptly describes a lot of us um, right now, we all have certain passages that, that come to our minds, places in Scripture where we go just to be reminded, to get some, some much-needed perspective. You know, First Peter chapter 1 is one of those passages for me. Um, so tonight, for those interested, I, I thought I'd jump on here and just share some, some thoughts from God's Word and, and hopefully re remind us that this world truly is not our home. That, that's not just something we say, but it's the reality. And whatever we're experiencing right now in this world, and certainly there, there's no shortage of things that are going on that um, just kind of uh, trouble us. Brethren, it's only temporary. All of this is only temporary. 1 Peter chapter 1, I want you to read with me beginning at verse 30. 1 Peter chapter 1, listen to verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in this last time. The NIV renders this, give praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then that's exactly what that phrase there means, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word blessed that, that is used here is used in a general way to, to express honor. It's, it's the idea of, of speaking well of something. It's the idea of praising uh, someone. Brethren, praise and honor are due our God. You would agree with me. He is most worthy of our praise and our honor. But I want you to appreciate the why. Why give praise to our God here, according to Peter, as he's led by the Spirit? He says, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. For then we praise God because of what he's done for us. Specifically being that he has caused us to be born again. Rather think about it. It's to be born again. This is a new start. This is about forgiveness. God causes this regeneration to happen. It's God that makes this happen. Uh, I'm reminded of what Paul would tell us in Titus, in, in, in Titus 3 at verse 5, that, that he that being God saved us. Let's stop there. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness. In other words, it's not about us, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. God did this. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, right? The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. We praise God for this. If anyone is in Christ, well, let's just make this point. How does one get into Christ, so to speak? Galatians 3, verse 26 tells us that one is baptized into Christ. Those who have been baptized for the forgiveness of sins, a new creature, this is a new start. A second chance, you might say, in, past, in spite of my past, regardless of, of, of how bad I want. Your blessing, brethren. God, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. But I want you to appreciate that next phrase back there in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According to his great mercy has caused us to be born again. Listen to this. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, brethren, this verse tells us that our hope of eternal salvation is a result of the resurrection of our Lord. The body of Christ that was placed in the tomb and was raised on the third day, so it will be with the faithful Christians of all time at the Lord's coming. Our bodies, too, will be raised. Now, brethren, I just want you to think for a moment. This is fundamental stuff. But think about what this means for all of us. This world is not our home. My death and your death is not the end of things. Just the opposite, it's the beginning, so to speak. Our Lord's resurrection, you see, it changes everything for us. It gives us needed hope, a living hope. Paul put it this way in Romans 1 and verse 1, Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David, according to the flesh, who was declared, listen to this, the son of God by the resurrection from the dead 
according to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. You see, it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ, brethren, that guarantees our own resurrection. Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 15 as the first fruits. It's our guarantee. So, so brethren, for those of us who, who are struggling a bit right now, who are just tired of, of being tired, tired of, of everything that's going on around us, uh, it just seems one thing after another. It's just been like that for a little while. Here's what I want you to do. I want all of us to do. I want us to commit to be intentional about this, brethren. We need to praise God. Quit thinking about all that's going on around us. Quit thinking about this virus. Quit thinking about all of this stuff. And we just need to praise God. Why? Because, brethren, we have a living hope, a confident expectation, not based on us, but based on God, based on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ his resurrection, that things will get better in spite of what things are now. You see, 1 Peter 1 at verse 3 again, give praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth and a hope that is alive. It is alive because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. By God's mercy, we have a living hope. In good times, we have hope. In bad times, we have hope. Regardless of that doctor's prognosis, we have hope. Regardless of this virus, brethren, we have hope. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead, and I will too. You see, the proverbial writer sums this up, uh, this idea up in Proverbs 10, verse 28, where he says, the hope of the righteous is gladness, but the expectation of the wicked perishes. So I ask you tonight, what do you hope in? May I suggest to you, if your hope is built on, on this economy, if it's built on some political leader, if it's built on your career, your family, your investments, or anything of this world, all of these hopes, no, will eventually come to nothing. They're dead. You see, the economy will crash. Your career could end tomorrow. Your 401k could crash with one just foolish decision. But because of the mercy of God, because of our new birth, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, brethren, we have a living hope. The Apostle John said it this way in 1 John 2 at verse 17, the world is passing away and also it's lost, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. Brethren, that must be our focus. Are we doing the will of God? Because it's that man, it's that soul that will live with God forever. Brethren, that's a living hope that we, the faithful, have irregardless of our current circumstance. Brethren, we should treasure the truths expressed in passages like Colossians 3 and verse 1, where Paul would say, therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, he tells us in verse 2, to set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on this earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. That's Colossians 3, beginning in verse 1. So praise God, right? Bless God. For the faithful brethren, we are people of hope, a living hope. How about this? Praise God. Because we are people of inheritance. We are God's inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, back in our text, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Consider how the Holy Spirit here designs our, describes our inheritance. He says it's imperishable, not able to be destroyed. It doesn't wear out, never goes away. It's eternal. It's undefiled, not polluted, no blemish, no sin. It's perfection. It's unfading. It's not subject to decay, brethren. The idea of eternal bliss. Now, very simply, I want us to compare this idea of imperishable, and undefiled, and, and unfading. I want you to compare that with what the Bible says about everything else that oftentimes tempts us to hope in, ultimately leaving us so just devastated and disappointed, right? And Jesus said in Matthew 6 at verse 19, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Why? Where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. You see, you see they're, they're, they're temporary. They're wearing out. They're decaying. They're fading away. Brethren, what will we hope in? What will we live for? Can we see the difference? All of the things that seem so important right now, are going to be destroyed. You know, as strangers and pilgrims, as Peter identifies us later in this letter, as strangers and pilgrims just passing through, brethren, I think it's vital in times such as these that we take inventory as to how we view the things of this earth. Listen, if every circumstance in this life leaves us just falling to pieces, brethren, I think our perspective towards the things of this earth are a little out of balance. 
Peter says in the latter parts of verse 4 that, that, that this is it's reserved in heaven for you, th th this inheritance. Who's the for you? What's the stranger? It's the pilgrim. Peter here is writing to the faithful child of God. It's the person that, that lives this life by faith and not sight. It's the person who, whose life is lived in, in a proper response to God's grace, so much so that, that, that we have died to, to self. It's a life characterized by, by total trust and obedience. It's walking in the fear of the Lord, as, as we've talked about so much this year. I, I love what Jesus was saying to his disciples by way of comfort in John 14 and verse 1. I, I know many a, a, of you, this is a favorite passage, where Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, where I am, he says. There you may be also. Brother, what a thought. What a thought for the faithful, for the pilgrim, for the stranger of this land. I'll say it again, brethren. This world is not our home, and we need to quit acting like it. Paul said in Romans 8, verse 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God, and of children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Brethren, praise God. Bless God. Why? Because God has made us people of hope. God has made us a people of inheritance. And how about this? Brethren, we are people protected by the power of God through faith. Can't miss that. First Peter 1 and verse 3, again, blessed be the God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and won't fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen to verse 5. Who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I love that word protected, or some versions render it shielded. It's a military word. It can be used or translated as guarded even. I want you to think about this. We, the faithful of God, we are protected. Our inheritance, heaven, guarded by God, we find, and we, and, and it are securely protected, that, that being the idea. You know, throughout Scripture, there, there's many ways in which the Bible tells us how God protects us or defends his people. He, he, he protects us by way of temptation and leading us out of it. He, he, he protects us by providing a, a way of escape. He, 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 he tells us that, that his grace and the blood of Christ is far greater than, than our sin. He provides spiritual people, men, to, to restore us to repentance. He, he provides for, for us his word by, by way of, of keeping us from sinning and warning us and equipping us to be all that, that we should be to God, to be right with God, to ultimately realize our reward. God keeping his children. I don't fight Satan by myself. I don't rely upon my limited strength in my battle against sin, as we read about in Ephesians 6. In areas beyond my control, I have the ability through prayer to give it to him, and I can lean on, on, on God's providence that, that I can always see, that, that I don't always understand. It. And brethren, I can have confidence, regardless of what's going on around me, in my salvation, not because of me, not because I'm good, not because I deserve it, but because God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he is my protector. He is my shield. But brethren, we have to get this. Too often our, our, our friends won't want, want to stop here. I want you to listen to me. This keeping and protecting and guarding of God, brethren, it is conditioned upon my faith. First Peter 1 at verse 5, he says, we are kept by God through faith. You see, I have a role. I have a part in this through faith. Faith. Now, we know from Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Faith is man's part, God's revelation. True faith is obedient faith. Faith apart from works, as James tells us, is dead. Brethren, the faithful child of God takes God at his word, and he applies it to his life, understanding that God's way is best, that God is for us, that his word is for us. But brethren, here's what it means to me. This is so special, so precious, so valuable. However, you want to think of it. Here's the way I think of it. No man can take my salvation away. No, no, no leader, no world leader, no government can take my salvation away. No virus can take my salvation away. No circumstance in this life can take my salvation away. No earthly power can take my salvation away. No enemy of God can take away my inheritance. The only person that can take it away is me. 
You see, I can choose to give it up. I can lose it. I can forfeit it. You see, it's me. It's my response to God's grace. As we close, I hope encouraged by the word of God tonight. Let's read verses 6 through 9 in 1 Peter chapter 1. Listen to verse 6. He says, in this, this is all that we've talked about, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, right? So that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you've not seen him, you love him. Though you don't see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith, listen to this, the salvation of your souls. Brethren, when things are, are hard in this life, when things uh, appear bleak, when when trials just seem to drag and drag and drag on, and when we're just tired of being tired and we just want it to go back what we believe should be normal. You know, brethren, as a faithful child of God, as a result of God's mercy and grace, the blood of our Lord, I can be joyful. I, I don't have to fall apart at the changing circumstances of this life. You see, I can rejoice greatly, not because things are easy now, not because I won't lose in this life. I'm going to lose much in this life, right? We're losing much in this life. Not, not because this life won't at times be characterized by tears. Some of you are enduring unimaginable things right now. I cannot imagine going through the things that some of you have gone through and are going through. We're going to hurt in this life. But even in all of this, brethren, I can be joyful. Why? Because of my God. Because of my Lord and his sacrifice, because of my Lord's resurrection. You see, I'm a person of hope. I'm a person of inheritance. I'm securely protected by God through faith. You see, our tested faith, Peter says, is more valuable than gold. Like gold, our faith must be refined. We want faith, though, without testing them. But true faith must be tested. It must be proven. It must endure hard times. It must endure hard choices. It must endure typical times. It must endure a suffering. But that tested faith, when we respond to these things in faith, in God's will, the Bible tells us here that it results in praise and glory and honor to our Lord. And the end result, again, verse 9, 1 Peter 1 and verse 9, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. So, brethren, here's what I want us to do. I want us to take our minds off all that's surrounding us. The conditions of, of, of this virus, um, whatever it may be that is causing us so much distress and discouragement. I want us to take our eyes off these earthly things and put our eyes on God. I want us to put our eyes on hope, on our inheritance. I want us to praise God for his mercy. Praise God for our forgiveness. Praise God for our living hope. I want us to praise God for our inheritance that's secured. I want us to praise God for his protection. Brethren and friends, it is wonderful to be a child of God. We have so much to look forward to, so I'll say it again. This world is not our home. We've got to quit acting like it is. We've got to quit responding like it is. It's not. You see, I'm not defined as a faithful child of God by these circumstances. And praise God for it. I, I appreciate you joining me for a, a few minutes tonight. And as I said, First Peter chapter 1, when I'm struggling, um, when I'm having a hard time, where my mind goes places that really it shouldn't go. When I allow the stresses and the anxieties of this life to be even somewhat overwhelm me at times, and this is kind of a go-to passage for me. And so this is what I was going to study with my family tonight. And uh, hopefully it's been beneficial to you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful for all that you do for us, Father. Father, we recognize that uh, things are difficult right now. So many among us are hurting, Father, this virus is continues to um, keep us from doing the things that we want to do in many ways, keep us from being around the people we want to be around. And it's just difficult, Father. And 
Father, we're, we know that, that you have the power to, to take this away. And Father, though, we praise you. We trust you. For we understand, Father, that your will is perfect. Father, give us the courage in these difficult times to put you first, to put your kingdom first, to put others before ourselves. Father, help us to keep the perspective of hope. Help us to be confident of, of our salvation, not because of us, but through your, because of your love and your sacrifice, and your son, Father. Father, we understand and realize that we deserve none of this. You bless us so richly. Father, for this hope, knowing that things will get better, Father, it's everything. And you provide us that. And for that, Father, through your son, we are so very thankful. Father, we ask you to be with all of those who are hurting, Father. We have so many who have been through so much for the strength and for their faith through all of this. Father, it's an inspiration to us. And Father, we're so thankful for them. Father, we ask you to be with so many of our brethren right now who are struggling with various ailments, for all who are struggling with COVID, for all who are who have been exposed, quarantined, and all the various things that go with it, Father, and all the decisions that have to be made, Father. We just, we pray that you'd give us wisdom and understanding and certainly healing for those who are inflicted with this virus right now. Father, we pray for our country. Father, we recognize that so many things are going in the wrong direction. Father, we pray for our leaders in some way that they would recognize that they are merely servants of yours, that they would act like it, that they would turn to you, country in turn would turn to you as well. Father, we recognize that that's the answer. Father, we ask you to be with our sister Jenny. We ask you to be with Ellie, to be with Katie, to be with Dad. Father, we ask you to be with our sister Jean. We ask you to be with our sister Louise. We ask you to be with our sister Marion. Father, to be with their families as they care for them. Father, we love them. and um, We're just so thankful that they have been blessed with these wonderful families, Father provide such an incredible example of love and faith and, and, and care for, for these special ladies, Father. Just continue to bless them, because they've been such a blessing to us, Father. We ask you to be with my grandfather as he's in a difficult stage of life. Be with my family as they care for him, Father. Father, be with all of us. Help us as a congregation to continue to be united. Father, help us to be thankful for our elders, to recognize the difficulty and so many decisions that have had to be made. Father, we know they're tired. And Father, help us to be encouragers to them. Let them know just how thankful we are for them and for their families. Father, bless us this night. We pray that as the weather comes in, that you would keep us all safe for those who have to be out in it. Father, we pray that they would remain safe. Bless us this day, Father. We long to be with you. Look forward to this coming Lord's Day where we can come together and worship you, Father. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray.